question 20 same as question 19 in the previous video a car starts from a point p with initial speed of 8 and uniform acceleration of 4. two seconds later so that's t minus 2 for the second car the car q starts from a point o with initial velocity 30 and uniform acceleration of 3. show that after passing p q will never be ahead by more than 74 meters so this is the greatest distance and the greatest distance are when the velocities are equal. So if we take P to be V1, we're going to get U, which is 8, plus AT, which is 4T. If we take Q to be V2, it's going to be equal to 30, initial 30, plus 3T. So when are these velocities equal? At what time are these velocities equal? 8 plus 4t would have to be equal to 30 plus 3t. And again, you're showing I mean that's not t, it's t minus 2. So just be careful. So 8 plus 4t is equal to 30 plus 3t minus 6. So t is equal to, well, 3t across, that's just going to give me t. Then we have 24 minus 8, 16 seconds. 16 seconds. We get the distances now. We get the distance for p. The distance for p is equal to ut, and p started first, so that's t is equal to 16. t minus 2 is equal to 14, and that's q. So ut, 8 by 16 plus a half a which was 4 by t squared which is 16 squared so 8 16 80 and 48 128 plus 2 by 16 squared is 2 by 256 which is 512 and 128 and 512 is 640 meters so we find the distance for q Distance for Q is equal to U T, which is 30. T minus 2 was 14 plus a half. A, which is 3 by 14 squared. 30 by 14 is 420. Plus 14 squared is 196. Divided by 2 is 98 times 3 is 294. So the distance for Q is 714 meters. And we were asked to show that the, well, the greatest distance is what we were asked to show, 74, which we can see here, 714 minus 640 is 74 meters quad or at. Demonstrandum, that which must be demonstrated. Question 21. At a certain moment in the Tour de France, Alberto is 22 meters behind Gustav. Okay, Alberto is 22 meters behind Gustav. Alberto is cycling at 12 meters per second. So Alberto's U equals 12 and A equals 1. And Gustav has just changed wheel, so his initial velocity is 0 and he accelerates with A is equal to 2. After how long will Alberto catch up with Gustav? Okay, so how long? We're looking for time will he catch you up so we're leading with time and distance so let's have a look at our distance and time so for alberto he's going to travel at 12 t plus a half one by t squared so the distance traveled by alberto is going to be 12 t plus a half t squared at any time Distance traveled by Gustav is going to be 0t plus a half a by t squared. Now that's just going to give me, we have, sorry, we have a is 2, so it's just going to give me t squared. So what's happening here at some point? So, so if we say they mean at this point, the distance traveled by Alberto, S1, will have to be equal to this distance here, S2, 
plus the 22. So we can say that S1 is equal to S2 plus 22 to solve this, or S Alberto. So that's going to give me 12T plus a half T squared will have to be equal to t squared plus 22 and it looks like it's going to give me a quadratic here let's multiply by 2 24t plus t squared is equal to 2t squared plus 44 so we're going to get t squared minus 24t t squared minus 24t plus 44 equals 0 so we're going to get two positive values in the second one one will be smaller than the other will be the other point at which the second guy catches up so does this factorize? Yeah, we can see it's 22 and 2 here. 22 twos are 44 and 22 and 2 is 40, 24. So my times are t is equal to 2 and t is equal to 22. Obviously the diagram is not the scale. Now what else are we asked? Well, there are the two questions. How long will you catch up to and how long more? Well, another 20 seconds will be the answer here. 22 minus 2. Will be equal to 20 sex more. Question 22. A body starts from rest at P, travels in a straight line and comes to rest at Q, which is 696 six meters from P. The time taken is 66 seconds. For the first 10 seconds, it travels a uniform A, A1, then travels at a constant speed, so this is our time velocity graph, and finally brought to rest by a uniform deceleration A2 for six seconds. So we're given a 10, a 6, 16, so there must be 50 left in the middle. So let's let's draw that. Oh, constant speed, deceleration. Call our max velocity V. We don't know what A1 is and we don't know what A2 is, but we do know the times here. First 10 seconds, final six, and the middle is 50. So we can use the area under the curve of 696 to find out what V is. So we have 1, 2, 3, these areas, 1 plus 2 plus 3 is equal to 696. So half of 10 by V plus 50 by V plus half of 6 by V is equal to 696 so i'm going to get 5v plus 50v plus 3v is equal to 696 so i'm going to get 58v is equal to 696 and 10 58 is 580 would leave 116 which you can see is another two of them so v is equal to 12 meters per second at this point V is equal to u plus a t. 12 is equal to rest 0. So a1 by 10. So a1 is going to be 12 divided by 10, which is 1.2. And a2, v is equal to u plus a t. I just write the formula out. So you can keep the same consistent method so well in this case my v i'm going to have a zero for my final velocity initial velocity 12 and then retardation or deceleration minus a2 times 6 so you can see here a2 is going to be equal to 2 meters per second squared now there's another part to this question part b of the journey from rest at P to rest a Q have been traveled with no interval of constant speed. Okay, so there are two triangles, so it's up and then down to a max velocity. But subject to A1 for a time T1 and A2 for a time T2, show that the time for the journey is 8 root 29 seconds. Okay, so we have a ratio here A1 was 1.2 and a2 was equal to 2. So it's going to take longer to go up than to come down. So the ratio needs to be a1 to be bigger. So it just reverses them around. Um, so 1.2 to 2, if I'm, that's going to be 12 to 20, which is 
three to five. So five parts of the journey. Well, there's eight parts to the journey. So five over eight of them must be in here. And three over eight of them must be in here. So that's T1 to T2. Um, my total journey being T. Okay, let's get velocity in terms of T here. That's the best way to do this question. So V is equal to U plus AT. So V is equal to the first one we have 1.2 when U is zero. So 1.2 is A by the time taken, which is five eighths of the overall time. That's going to give me 5.26t over 8, which is 3t over 4. So that's my max velocity. Now I can get half the base by the height. So half the base, which is t, or small t, I've been using a small t, half the base, which is the total time, by the velocity in terms of t, which is 3t over 4. That's a t. And that's going to be equal to the area, which was 696, wasn't it? 696. 696. So I'm going to get 3t squared over 8 is equal to 696. Does this work down for me? I'm going to get 3. I'm going to get t squared is equal to 696 times 8 divided by 3. So t squared is going to be 2, 3, 2 by 8, 1,624, 256. That's going to give me t squared. 1,626 is 1,856. So t squared, I haven't memorized the square root of 1,856, but on a calculator, it's giving me 8 root 29. So I'm getting the square root, 8 root 29, which is what we were asked to show. So t is equal to 8 root 29 QED. Question 23. A passenger train is traveling at 80 meters per second and it's 1500 meters behind the goods train traveling at 30 meters per second. Here's my goods train and my passenger train. So he's catching up by what? He's going at 80. This guy's going at 30. So we, the relative speed here is catching them at 50 meters a second. So we could call that u, the relative speed. The relative velo velocity at the end will need to be zero for them not to crash. So I think v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as will help here. So zero, if you take that final velocity of zero, it's going to be 50 squared plus twice a by 1500 to stop them crashing so 2500 plus 3000 a equals zero a is going to be minus 25 over 30 or minus 5 over 6 meters per second squared so that the trains don't crash Question 24 is similar to 23. The driver of a car is traveling at 20 meters per second, sees a second car 120 meters in front, traveling with a uniform speed of eight. So the relative, this, the relative speed here, the initial relative speed, is the difference between the two. So it's equal to 20 minus eight, which is 12. Now the speed, they need to have the same speed at the end. So the final relative speed, so for the stop them crashing, so you're imagining they're literally driving bumper to bumper. So the final relative speed is equal to zero. They're both going the same speed, so it's gonna be whatever speed they're going minus the same number. So we can get the same thing here. The relative distance is 120. So if you put this into V squared is equal to U squared plus two AS, we're gonna get my zero is equal to my relative speed plus twice the retardation by the distance. So we're going to have 144 divided by 
minus 144 divided by 240 is equal to what should look like an A. 12 over 20 minus 12 over 20 which is equal to minus 3 over 5 meters per second squared to stop them crashing in part 2 if the actual retardation is 1 calculate a the time interval in seconds for the faster car to reach a point 66 meters behind the slower and then the shortest distance between the cars Right down what we have the retardations once so we have my my relative speed is 12 my acceleration or deceleration minus one and uh, the distance is he has to be 66 behind so when he was 120 so how far is he going to have to travel 34 and 20 54 meters and we're looking for the time so if i fill this into s is equal to ut plus a half at squared I should get an answer here. 54 is equal to 12t. And a is minus 1, so it's going to be minus 1 over 2t squared. Multiplying by 2, 108 is equal to 24t minus t squared. And bringing these two guys to the left, I'm going to get t squared minus 24t plus 108 is equal to 0. Does this factorize nice and easy for us? 618, so I think it's 108 t by t. 60 and 48, yes, 6 and 18 is 24. So t is equal to 6 or 18. So we'll see after 6 seconds, he's going to be 54 behind. Then if he continues going for another 18, he's going to be 54 ahead. So that's going to give me part A, I think part A. And then the shortest distance between the cars, we do that here, the shortest distance. Let's write down our variables. We have u is equal to 12. a is equal to minus 1. We don't know the distance. We don't know the time either to get to that distance. So s is equal to ut plus a half at squared there might be another way to do this we're looking for minimum here the shortest or the minimum distance so we can use differentiation when we see min or max let's see will that work for us here s is equal to 12 t minus a half t squared now for a min if we differentiate and let it equal zero dy dx normally equals zero for my min point but now we have an s and a t so we can do exactly the same thing the s dt and you may not have seen this early in fifth year but the rules of differentiation reduce your power multiply the power by the number in front and reduce your power by one so we're going to have one times 12 12 t to the power zero which is just 12 minus this two by this half which is minus one or just minus t to the power of one and that tidies up to be the SDT is equal to 12 minus T. And if we solve that for it being equal to zero, we'll get the minimum in terms of T. So T is equal to 12. So at T is equal to 12, we're going to get my distance here. S when it's 12, when T is 12. 12 by 12 minus a half 12 squared. It's going to be 144 minus a half of 144. So the shortest distance between them is going to be 72 meters after the initial point of 120. So 120 minus 72, it'll have to travel 72 for the shortest distance, 28 and 20, 48 meters.